Tonight, I trust that God will speak to you in a way that is related to where you are and, and where he wants you to be. Because there is always a place that God wants you to be. I have titled my message, You Can Rise Above It. You can rise above it. I don't know what shortcomings you're dealing with, but you can rise above it. I don't know what limitations confront you in life, but you can rise above it. I don't know what is pushing you down, but you can rise above it. When I was a little boy, uh, probably I was in class two or second year of primary school, whichever country and how you interpret it. Uh, I was in uh, the second grade, if you were in America. In Ghana, we we'll say class two. I'm sure in the UK you say something else, uh, grade two or whatever it is. <clears throat> so uh, there was a young boy in our neighborhood uh, whom we knew to have an impediment in his walking. I wouldn't know whether he was paralyzed or crippled or lame. I, I was too young to determine what kind of ailment he had. But what I knew was that he used uh, crutches and walked with crutches, two of them. And uh, he was slightly older than me uh, in my older brother's class. And uh, every time we went to school, uh, people would make fun of him uh, because he couldn't walk. You know, people can be very cruel, especially kids. We say they are innocent, but they can be very cruel too. <laughs> and, and, and so they, they would make fun of him and all of that. And one day, we were at the playground, at the school playground, and uh, some of the kids just knocked him down. So he was down with his crutches and they made fun of him and uh, one of the boys went to grab his two crutches to run away with the two crutches. And something happened that day uh, that I've never seen uh, ever since. This boy who I have never known to walk or run got up and started running. I don't know whether it was supernatural healing or anger healing <laughs> or whatever it was, but something came upon him and he ran after this uh, gentleman, this young boy with his crutches. And as far as I can remember, he never went back to the crutches. Now, since I have been an adult and I've grown up, I've always replay that incident in my mind. And, and so I'm trying to figure out what was wrong with him. Uh, was it that he had an impediment in his feet and his parents decided to give him crutches? And maybe at a certain point in his life, he had overcome the problem, but he still carried crutches until one day God used the mischief of a young boy to remind him of his healing. And that's why I tell you, you can rise above it. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to rise above it. I don't know what life has thrown at you. I don't know what difficulty you are dealing with, but you can rise above it. And I'm going to anchor my thoughts in a story related to a man in the Bible and his encounter with Jesus, the man is called Zacchaeus. His story is narrated in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. The story goes up to verse 10, but I'll read from verse 1 to 6. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. That's one thing people forget. He was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. 
And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. The story of Zacchaeus speaks to us at many levels. And, uh, but in the context I'm preaching it today, it speaks to us in the context of overcoming shortcomings. When you are confronted with challenges that keep you from becoming whom you want to become and how to overcome them. The Bible describes Zacchaeus in many ways. Uh, as you read about him, you get to know that he was a very colorful character. He lived in Jericho. He was a chief tax collector. He was rich. He's a quick thinker, just observing from his story. He's active. He's outgoing. He had a cheerful personality. But all of that energy was bundled in a very small body. Zacchaeus was a short man. These days, in this work era, it's not politically advisable to say somebody short. So we can say that he's vertically challenged <laughs> and limited in extension. So he has all the positives, but he has a major negative that goes against him. And, and his name, Zacchaeus, means pure. So whoever named him expected that he would be an upright person. But in life, he made choices that were opposite of pure in the eyes of the Jews. He was a tax collector. Zacchaeus is not paralyzed. He could walk. He's not lame. He's not a cripple. But he is dealing with a major stuff. And there are two main challenges that Zacchaeus had. First is he had a reputational problem. He was a tax collector. Actually, he's the chief tax collector. And if you were a Jew in the days of Jesus, you didn't want to be a tax collector and you didn't want to be the chief tax collector because tax collectors were hated on both sides. They were hated by the Romans because the Romans thought that they were crooks and they were hated by the Jews because the Jews thought that they were crooks and, uh, and sellouts. Because the tax collectors collected Roman tax on behalf uh, of the Roman Empire from the Jews. And normally they collected tax uh, on a commission basis. So the more taxes he collects, the higher he is paid. So a rich tax collector in Israel would definitely be somebody who has offended everybody. So he has a reputational problem. He's not liked by many people. But more than that, he has a problem with his stature. He's limited in height. He's not tall. He couldn't be blamed for his height because he didn't make himself short. He was born that way. Probably his parents were short and he inherited that limitation from them. So there are, there are certain problems you have in life that didn't originate from you. you. You were just born with some of those challenges. And in Zacchaeus's case, he was short, most probably because his parents were short. His reputation, he chose for himself, but his stature, he didn't choose for himself. Both what he chose for himself and the things that he inherited had become a limitation to him. And that describes sometimes some of the challenges we face. There are challenges we face that we have inherited. And then there are challenges we face that we brought upon ourselves. There are challenges we face because the culture we live in made us that way, our parents made us that way, and then there are challenges we made because we made some very dumb choices in our life. So Zacchaeus has both. And both 
are present with him. But the Bible says he was rich. I don't know about you, but when you are rich, you don't care about much. So he's short, but he's rich. Who cares? I mean, a person who is short and rich doesn't seem to have any problem because rich seems to compensate for short. And then he has a bad reputation, but he's rich. So at the point in Zacchaeus' life, he has a problem, but he has compensated for the problem with his wealth. The wealth is now a cover-up. It, cover it covers up his stature, covers up the reputational problem. And then one day, Jesus is coming his way. And all of a sudden, rich can't do it. Money can't pay for it. So everything he thought he had built by himself to overcome his limitation comes crumbling down. He hears that Jesus is coming this way. And the passage says that he sought to see who Jesus was. That would tell you that probably he was a very spiritual person. Now he wants to see Jesus. So everything that he thought he had overcome comes crashing in. First, Jesus is surrounded with people. The crowd are around Jesus. Zacchaeus has a reputational problem. For him to see Jesus, he has to see the people around Jesus. And the people around Jesus were Jews, they don't like him. So all of a sudden, he can't buy a way through reputational problem. He can't do much about it. Secondly, the people around Jesus are taller than him. So he realizes, not only can I not buy reputation, I cannot also buy height. I have a problem. You know, because there, there are sometimes we all know we have challenges in life. But somehow, we deal with it or we manage with it until you have a dream to achieve something big for God. And then all of a sudden, your limitation becomes a limitation. So what is your desire? Maybe you say, I want to live for God. I want to have a happy marriage. I want to get married. I want to set up a business. I want to be financially independent. I want to be happy. And then you realize there's something in your life preventing you from becoming that. So maybe you want to live for God, but you have a lot of past and current entanglements. Or you want to have a happy marriage, but you have a bad temper. Or you want to marry, but you are physically not attractive. I'll let that settle a little bit. <laughs> because we all assume we are very handsome and beautiful. And it's a very good assumption. But sometimes when the reality hits you, you just realize it's not working. It's not working. So you want to marry, but then... There's a physical limitation. Or you want to set up a business, but you have no money. You have no education. You have no contacts. You have no resources. You want to be happy, but you're making bad choices all the time. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus, but he's a publican. He's a tax collector, and he's short. So what do you do when God plants a vision in your heart. And then you realize all of a sudden, I don't have what it takes to accomplish the vision. God says, I want you to be the head and not the tail, but then you realize, I don't have what it takes to be the head. God wants me to pastor people, but my past is not good. God wants me to be a leader, but I'm scared of people. I feel intimidated by people. What do you do? Can you rise above it? 
I believe we can rise above it. I believe that the, the theme of this year's conference, Rise, is speaking to somebody to say that you have come to a point where your dream seems to be limited, but you can rise above it. Whether it's something you inherited from your natural heritage, you can rise above it. Whether it's based on bad choices you made, you can rise above it. And Zacchaeus has to find a way to rise above his stature and his reputation. And so what does Zacchaeus do? The passage says he ran ahead. Doesn't run behind, doesn't run backwards. He ran forward. He moved away, he moved forward from the criticizing crowd. Because sometimes the, 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 the most difficult place to be in is the place where everybody knows you. It can be a good place to be, but it can also be the worst place to be. Because people would not make you forget who you are. They will make you forget all the things you have done. They've made you, for, they'll make you never to forget your negatives. So Zacchaeus is running with people, he's with people, and I'm sure people look around and say, hey, what are you doing here, Zacchaeus? You're a tax collector, you're a bad man, that's a righteous man, that's a rabbi, that's the Messiah, that's the son of God, he doesn't deal with people like you. And probably he had it for so many people, Zacchaeus decided, if I'm going to fulfill my dream of seeing Jesus, I don't have to hang with this crowd. Because this crowd is talking me down. And so the Bible says he ran ahead. Ahead of who? Ahead of the crowd. Ahead of where he was. Ahead of the people. And he ran. He made the effort. And today I came to challenge somebody. God has a plan for your life. God has a vision for your life. There's greatness waiting for you. You sense it in your heart. You know it in your heart that your destiny is about to manifest. But you are down here. It's time to move from where you are closer to where God wants you to be. Sometimes in moving ahead, some people must be left behind. Some people must be left behind. Some experiences must be left behind. You have to get to the point where you stop talking about everything that happened yesterday, everything that happened during your divorce, everything that happened when your wife left, everything that happened when your husband left. They left, that's why they left. But you are left. And you can move on with your life because they have left. And people may not fully appreciate it. They may play your record over and over. We wish you had not done it, but you did it. We wish you were different, but I'm not. And Zacchaeus discovered, I can't change shot. I can't change task collector. But I can change location. I can change where I am. I can move from where I am. I can move ahead of this negative group of people because God has a plan for my life. Somebody say, I'll go above this. The second thing he did, he climbed a tree. He climbed a tree. He didn't just go horizontally ahead. He went vertically above. Two movements, horizontal, vertical, on line and above. He had to find something he didn't have, something that would take him beyond where he was. And it takes a lot of creativity to do what he did. The tree was tall, but it had no desire to see Jesus. The tree was tall, but it had no eyes. The tree was tall, but it was just tall. It only had the advantage of height, but it had no vision, it had no purpose, it had no desire, but it was there. 
Zacchaeus is short, but he has a vision. He has a desire. So what does he do? He marries his vision with a system. And then he climbs the system. The tree takes him high. And from there, there's no negative talk. And there's no obscuring of his vision. Stature is no longer a problem. Reputation is no longer a problem. They can't even see him to criticize him. The challenge we face when we want to rise is that sometimes the people closest to us can be very sympathetic and their sympathy can be your destruction. I go back to the story I told. I've tried to process that story from my childhood, tried many times to think through what happened to that young man. What happened? Of course, we moved away from that location. I never saw him again, and I haven't been able to follow his story. Did he go back for the crutches later in his older life? I don't know. But I know there was that moment in his life that he ran without crutches, and I saw him. The only conclusion I can come to as an African child that maybe when he was a child he fell down or something happened to him and somebody said give him crutches to walk with. And maybe over time as he's growing up he overcame whatever it was but they have already told him give him crutches. You know because sometimes people want to help but they are ignorant. People want to help, but the help is a crutch. And they never want you to outgrow, outlive the crutches they have given to you. Do you know there are people who are happy when you complain about your problems and are very unhappy when you don't talk about your problems? Every time you meet, you talk about what your ex did and what your ex did and what your ex did. And then one day you come to church, you hear a fantastic message from Pastor Matthew, and X is X. You don't talk about X again. So after one or two weeks, they hear your conversation. They say, what's happening to you? What's wrong with you? Are you avoiding reality? Why don't you talk about him any longer? Because their sense of identity is based on your dependence. And Zacchaeus decided, I've come to a point in my life. I'm not going to be a victim of my community. I'm going to rise above this. And I'm going to live the life God wants me to live. And he made himself visible to Jesus. He found a sycamore tree. A sycamore tree is a very interesting tree. It's a very common tree. It is all over Jericho. It's all over the place. It's, it's one of those trees that you find everywhere. But the sycamore tree has, has, um, has, was designed for Zacchaeus. Because a sycamore tree has very low branches. So that even a Zacchaeus can climb it. It, he doesn't have to climb the stem like you climb a coconut tree to get to the top. He just has to reach up as long as his body can take him and he will find something to hold on. And if he holds on, he will find another branch in front of his hand to hold on to. And if he gets that, he's going to find another one to hold on to. So for his height, the sycamore tree was suitable for him. And that's why the Bible is clear to mention the exact tree he climbed. Amen. Because he didn't climb a cedar. He couldn't have climbed a cedar. He couldn't have climbed so, a palm. He only could climb a tree that was designed for his infirmity. For each one of us, the Bible says God will not put you in a, any situation and with the situation not make a way of escape. The way of escape is your sycamore tree. 
It is something God puts in your path. It's a person God puts in your path. It's a message God puts in your path. It's a church God puts in your path. It's a friend God puts in your path. You don't need to struggle to access the sycamore tree. It is designed for your accessibility. It is designed for your limitation. It is designed for what you don't have. And you don't have to travel to Egypt to find it. It's right there in Jericho. And it's in everybody's house. But nobody climbs it. Because they are sufficient in their height until a Zacchaeus comes who says, I need a sycamore tree. This year, as we talk about height, there are many of us who are vertically challenged. There are heights you want to get to, but you don't even know the next step to take. There are places God wants to take you, but you don't even know how to get there. And so here you are, you've heard about something, you have a dream of it, you believe you will get it, but you can't get it. And then God brings somebody your way. Sometimes it's as simple as walking into church. And sitting in church. And sitting sometimes at the back, wishing nobody bothers you. And then all of a sudden, a word comes. And you know, that's my sycamore tree. I'm going to hold on to this word. And from this word, I'm going to take the next one. And I'm going to take the next one. And I'm going to take the next one until I get to the place where reputation or stature is not a limitation. Sometimes it is just something you heard from a Christian preacher, maybe on radio, on television, and all of a sudden you know this is the word of God for me. The good thing about Zacchaeus is he's the only one who saw the value of a sycamore tree because he's the only one the Bible mentions. Everybody else passed by and never bothered to find a tree. Because the word that is designed for you, you are the only one who discovers it. People can sit in church, hear the same thing from the same preacher in the same room. One gets it, the other doesn't get anything. Because if it is your sycamore tree, you will discover it. You will identify it. And so here is Zacchaeus. He's above everybody. And Jesus is coming. Whether by word of knowledge or special discernment, Jesus knew Zacchaeus was in the tree. But I believe it's a combination of all of that. Spiritually, Jesus knew he was there. But physically, Jesus knew he was there. Because Jesus could see him. Before, he couldn't be seen, but now he can be seen. Jesus saw him, and Jesus looks to him, and I like how the Bible puts it. It says Jesus looked up to him. Here is somebody everybody is looking down on. Jesus is looking up to him. Jesus says, I didn't come to look down on you, Mr. Zacchaeus. I didn't come to destroy you. I didn't come to add to your woes. I didn't come to narrate all your failures. I didn't come to tell you where it didn't work and why it can work and how you can work and how you are a failure. I came because I want to bring something into your house. You want to see me? I want to see you too. You want to have a vision of me? I have a vision with you in it. You want me to bless you? I know what you can become. And so he says, Zacchaeus, come down, for I'm coming to your house. So that tells you the sycamore tree was only a temporary measure that had to be deployed to bring Zacchaeus to the place of vision so he will meet the reality. And when he meets the reality, there will be no need for a sycamore tree because he's met Jesus.
all of us deal with stuff. Believe you me. All of us deal with stuff. Preachers deal with stuff. Non-preachers deal with stuff. Even people who preach on the platform deal with stuff. Everybody deals with stuff. If you don't deal with stuff, you're not stuff. Everybody deals with stuff. Everybody deals with something. Everybody has something that knows sometimes in their minds to tell them, you can't do it. It's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too high. You can't. You made a mistake. You can't, you can't erase it. And we deal with it in different degrees, in different ways. When I was called to be a preacher, and I dedicated myself to be a preacher, to preach, I told my best friend at the time, my very, very best friend, and I said, you know, God has called me. I'm going to quit my job, and I'm going to do And I, I told him, I thought, I thought he would be happy for me. And, and he, he looked me straight in my eyes and spoke to me the words which only best friends can say, you are a fool. <laughs> and he said it with sincerity. He said, it, he said it with authenticity. And then he went to narrate why I was a fool. He told me, you can't talk. You're quiet. You can't do this. You can't do that. Have you seen a preacher who is like you? Have you seen someone who talks like you? <laughs> says, you don't even know how to preach. You don't, you don't know how to, I've, I've heard you, you don't know how to preach. You're just talking, you just talk. You don't know how to preach. Because those days, preachers had to gesture, shout, scream. And I didn't know how to do that. So he gave me his assessment of me as a friend and said, you are a fool to attend this. There are people who are well-meaning, who know you very well, who are sincere, but very sincerely wrong. Their discouragement may be wrapped up in sincerity. It may sound like a good assessment of you. The only thing is that it doesn't quench the fire in you. It doesn't quench. After you've heard it, you still feel, I need to see Jesus. Everybody says you can't, but still you feel, I need to see Jesus. I need to build that business. I need to start this. I need to answer the score. And nothing quenches that. If you have an unquenchable fire within you, then God is stirring up something in you to do for him. And if it is God who is stirring up something in you, he will provide for you a sycamore tree. He will provide for you a sycamore tree. And for all you know, the reason why Pastor Matthew waited on the Lord and God said rise is because God had you in mind. Just you. Just you. I know, I know many people are here, some are watching online, but God can decide to go to a place just for one man. <laughs> Elijah, Elijah went to Zarephath for one woman. Jesus went to the pool for one man. Sometimes God has only one person in mind, and God says, you have felt limited, limited for so long. Now I am bringing a word directly to you that you can rise above this. You can rise above this. You can rise above that negative reputation. You can rise above it. You may have been called a prostitute, but you can rise above it. You may be a drug addict, but you can rise above it. You may have done some terrible things, but you can rise above it. You have fallen seven times, but you can rise above it. Whatever it is that you have experienced, you can rise above it. You can rise above your fears. Whatever those fears are, whether the fears of ghosts or fears of African witches or fears of demons trying to attack you, you can rise above it. Maybe somewhere at the back of your mind, you always feel, if things start working well for me, somehow they go wrong but you can rise above it. At least I rose above it. I was told I was a fool. 
Don't think I look like a fool now, do I? <laughs> Many years later, this friend of mine who told me I was a fool visited my church. After many years, church had been there. We were a big church in Ghana. He was in the service. I think he was in the second service. He was sitting somewhere in the overflow, in the, bag, in the balcony somewhere. And I preached, and afterwards he came with his family to introduce them to me. Oh, this is my best friend. We used to be buddies, and we used to be this. And we used to, I, I didn't remind him. <laughs> because at that time, I didn't want to rain on his party. But he was so happy for his wife to meet me and his children to meet me. And he said, that's my friend. That's my friend. We grew up together. We did that and we did that. I almost said, but you said I was a fool. <laughs> but you don't need to rub it in for anybody. God sometimes does that just to let you know you did the right thing. And if God vindicates you, you don't need to justify yourself. If God settles it, it's done. You don't need to make anybody feel bad about it. But guess what? If I had listened to him, he wouldn't have been in that auditorium. He wouldn't have said what he said. He probably wouldn't have anything to inspire his children with that afternoon. But thank God that I saw my sycamore tree and I said, although I don't have all the abilities that preachers have, I can still climb with the grace of God. And I can develop what I have, and I can rise one step at a time, one step at a time, until I rise above this. There are people here, God is telling you, you can rise above this. Don't let this limitation stop your vision from becoming a reality. Last Sunday, I was telling our church, that from childhood, or not childhood, I can say childhood, but from much of my adult life, I have not done anything that was easy to do. Everything I've done has been hard. Everything has been difficult. I've had to always do the extra. Nothing comes easy for me. I have to study hard to preach. Some people pick the Bible and get a word. I pick, I don't get a word. I have to cram and cram and cram and read and read and read and then make notes and notes and notes and analysis. Then I get 45 minutes sermon. I say, wow. And I hear people, they say, you know, I just print on, print on, print on, and then a verse flashes in my spirit and I just pick it and, and, and I flow. I say, wow. God, why don't you just let, let it flash? But I have to study and study and study. Everything I have built, I built it at a time when I had nothing. No money. No money. I was telling them about when I got married. I had nothing. No furniture. Love will not give you furniture, you know that. <laughs> And that girl decided to, to marry me, and I had nothing. And I had some old, discarded church benches. Benches, not pews. Benches, African benches. Yes, three parts. One on top, two on the sides. Benches. I picked four benches. And I've always been a man of excellence. Whatever you take, you have to improve it. So I painted it white. You have to improve it. You can't keep it as it is. You have to make it better. So I just took a brush, got white oil paint, painted it four white benches, put them in my living room, if you call that a living room, whatever that room was. And visitors will come and they sit on that bench. It's never, always, it's never been easy. But I always believe that if God gives you a vision that is high, and you say, I want to see Jesus, I want to do great things for God, he's not going to do it for you, but you put a sycamore tree somewhere in your path, and he's going to give you the grace to climb at the level you can climb. 
is not a tree that is beyond your reach. It is a tree within your reach. And if you are faithful to God in little things, you'll be faithful in much. So tonight, on this first night of IGOC, as we rise, I'm going to pray for two kinds of people. The first group are like Zacchaeus at one level. They need Jesus. They need to be saved. They need to be born again. They need to have a good relationship with Jesus. They need their bad stuff forgiven. They need Christ to come into their heart. They need Jesus to come into their home. For those people, you need what the Bible calls salvation or being born again or being reborn, having a new life in Christ Jesus because that is what Zacchaeus needed above everything else. That's group number one, those who need salvation. And then there are the second group of people who have a vision, but they just feel they are too short of the vision. They just feel this thing is too hard. I can't do it. I don't have what it takes. It could be money. It could be education. Whatever it is, today God will place a sycamore tree in your path, and what seems impossible will become possible. So the first group of people, if you are here or listening to me by any means, whether on social media, on television, or whatever means, you're listening to me and you say, I need a new life. I need my life to change. I want to be born again. I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want, I want to overcome all these problems. Jesus wants to come into your heart, whether you are in the auditorium, you are out there, wherever you are. I'm just going to ask everybody, just bow down your heads for a minute with me as we make this decision. If you are here and you want Jesus to come into your heart, you want to give your heart to the Lord, just lift up your right hand wherever you are. Lift up your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe somebody invited you. Maybe you've been coming to church here, but you've never made a point to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Just let your hand be up. If you're watching on, online and you want to make that decision, just lift up your right hand. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. Somebody said, Pastor, why should I lift up my hand? Lifting up your hand is a way of saying, I surrender. I'm surrendering my life to God. I'm making a decision to follow Jesus. Lift up your hand wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. For those of you who have your hand up, I'm going to ask you to stand up wherever you are. Just stand up wherever you are. And we're going to pray with you wherever you are. Just stand up. If you lifted up your hand, stand up. Where, if you're listening to me, wherever you lifted up your hand, stand up. And put your hand on your heart. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hand on your heart. And we're going to pray a very simple prayer. The whole church will join us to pray this prayer. Say with me, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But I thank you, Father, that Jesus Christ came to save me. He died for me. He rose again from the dead. And today, I receive him as my Lord and my Savior. I boldly declare that Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. I will live for him all the days of my life. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. If you pray that prayer sincerely, the church will reach out to you. They'll give you something to do. Uh, for you to continue living the Christian life. Today is the beginning of the greatest days of your life. And if you are here, you have a vision in your heart that God has planted in your heart, and you know you, you want to see this thing happen, but somehow you, you look at the difficulties and what you don't have and what you don't have and, and, and all of that. And it could be money, it could be education, it could be you don't have the right kind of resources, it could be a reputational problem. You think, what would people think about if, if they heard that I want to do this? Whatever God says you can do, you can do. 
And I just want to agree with you in prayer that everything that God has planted inside your heart, he will give you the means, he will give you the help, he will give you the resources, he will give you the right people, he will point you to the right person, he will give you the right church, he will give you the right book, he will watch the right TV program. Something is going to come your way that will take you from that limitation to the place that God wants you to be. And if you are that person, just rise up with me. Whatever you think the limitation, just rise up with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dreams are being born. Visions will be realized. You will be what God says you will be. You will not be left behind. You will build that building. You will establish that business. You will build that school. Whatever God says you will do, you will do. Age will not limit you. Though you may be older, you can still do it. God will give you the strength to do it, the wisdom to do it, the people to help you to do it. Whatever you need, there is a sycamore tree planted in your path for you to do it. Lift up your hands to God and begin to talk to him. He's your help. He's your help. He's your help. He's your help. The Lord is my help. The Lord is your help. Ask him for help. Ask him for help. Ask him for help. The help comes in many ways. It comes in many forms. It comes through people. It comes through institutions. It comes through a message you hear. It comes through the right linkages. In the name of Jesus. Ori ke sataraka si parandoya izama kete karia roste parakashita matika radoze meki aturi ala basiana kore ese bori andaraboshi ikastori andaraba mikwanda la bazota kari ise paronda iparoshe kete kariana in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus no natural born limitation. No self-imposed limitation will keep you from rising. You will rise to the place God wants you to be. And Father, I come into agreement with every man and woman, boy or girl, standing here today trusting you for help. You are our help in time of need. You are our help in ages past. You are our strength when we are weak. You are the lifter up of our head and our glory. And I pray, Father, coming into agreement with my loved ones here, that help will come to them. Help will come to them. Help will come to them. For everyone who is listening to me, I speak to you and prophesy to you that you're going to rise above this one. 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 May the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord give you clarity of understanding. Discernment. To discern your sycamore tree. To discern your help. To discern the help God has designed for you. You will not be stuck in the same place. You're going to run ahead of every limitation. You're going to run ahead. And you're going to climb up high. May the Lord give you wisdom. Understanding. Insight, Amen. clarity of thought, Amen. purpose Amen. for all that you do. Amen. And you will not miss your assignment. Amen. You will not miss your destination. Amen. You will not miss your purpose. Amen. You will be what God says you would be. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen and amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm above this one. I rise above it. I rise above it. I rise above it. I am who God says I am. I do what God says I can do. I achieve what God says I have achieved. I receive it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you.